Blind Freddy, sells gems. A man who can barely see. Gentlemen, we can rebuild his eye. We have the technology. We have the capability to facet the world's first bionic eye. Blind Freddy will have that eye. And see better than before. Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of Gem Cutting, I'll be featuring Goshenite or Goshenite, depending how you want to pronounce it, and I'll be faceting a bionic eye. This lot of Goshenite was purchased in the US a little while ago, and I have to admit I haven't looked at it for a while, but on second inspection, it's a pretty motley looking crew of gems. You would assume as a gem cutter that when you're paying quite a bit of money for what is supposed to be quality rough gem material, you would expect the gem dealer to be able to supply you with quality rough gems. However, of late I've been finding that a lot of the gems that are supposed to come from reputable gem dealers are not quite what they should be in quality. For example, in this lot here, not one of these gems out of the five gems is a half decent shape where you're going to get a decent square or a decent round. Some of these gems have internal flaws or cracks, so you're going to lose carat weight when you preform them, and others are chipped on the outer surface where the chips are exactly where you don't want them. As I bought this lot of gems online, then it's either that it was premeditated, the quality control, or my gem dealer is as blind as a bat. So I thought I would introduce him to you and give him the benefit of the doubt, because I'm such a sweet, nice guy. And here he is, Blind Freddy, and it does appear that he is impaired visually. And also, I thought I would introduce you to some of Blind Freddy's staff members, Cheetah, the monkey, who was named after a little device on a fastening machine and his seeing eye dog Seymour Butts. Also, Freddy loves his cats and is often seen walking around with them. So to help blind Freddy out with his poor eyesight, the team here at Vintage Time have got together and we've decided to facet a bionic eye lens for him. So this is the piece of Goshen I will use which has a crack in it but I think we can work around this to make Freddy his eye. So here is the design that the team at Vintage Time came up with for Freddy's bionic eye. After many months of planning and research, we've tried to whittle the cost down from a phenomenal $6 million down to about $6, which is actually less than what the rough gem cost. By using correct angles and indexes, the moment the faceted bionic eye is implanted into Freddy's eye socket, Freddy's optic nerve will immediately start to respond to the light rays that are stimulating the optic nerve. This will enable Freddy to see gems in a way that he's never seen them before, at about a hundred times the normal magnification of the human eye. So I'm in the faceting room now and I'm inspecting this gem one more time. Meanwhile, my assistant Jaws is off to the lab to pick up the diagnostic report for Freddy's brain. Unfortunately, the diagnostic report reveals that the electrical impulses and chemical signals within Freddy's brain is showing signs of deficiency. So after receiving the report, it is quite clear that with the condition of Freddy's brain that the bionic eye lens will need a lot of tweaking during the faceting process. And to add to the complexities of this particular project, this particular rough gem should have cut a 9mm lens, however, due to the flaw that is running through it, I'll be lucky to cut a 6mm to 7mm lens. So the preform is now complete and I've lost quite a bit of carat weight so I should be able to cut a 7mm lens. So the Goshenite is now attached to a brass stop stick and I'll insert that into my quill and the first thing I'll do is round out the lens so I get an accurate size.
So the first 16 pavilion facets have been cut down to the correct depth. Now I'm faceting the girdle outline to depth. So the next step for me will be polishing the girdle outline and then I'll be polishing the pavilion's facets but I'm going to be polishing every second pavilion facet because I want a frosted effect. So since Goshenite is part of the beryl family just like emerald or aquamarine it should polish easily but one of the problems a lot of people find is that they're polishing at too high a speed. In point of fact, the slower the disc is running, probably the better off you'll be. In fact, Goshenite polishes that easily by simply just rubbing the surface facet on the disc, it'll polish it. Incidentally, I'm using a tin lap with 50,000 diamond grit and just using one drop of sewing machine oil because I don't want the disc to be too greasy. So here are the scenes of what the pavilion and the girdle looks like after it's been polished and I thought I would mention that with gems in the beryl family, for example, whether it's aquamarine or emerald or halidor or goshenite, all of them have a very low refractive index. So it's important not to cut below the critical angle and unfortunately most beryls don't give a lot of output in scintillation. So I'm onto the secondary transfer and I'm ready to start faceting the crown. So I'm cutting all the crown facets with a 3000 grit disc so it should be fairly easy to polish with minimal scratches and we're going through all the scenes of the crown facets being cut. I thought I would mention going back earlier to the lack of scintillation within barrels. it's quite amazing the prices you will pay for aquamarine and particularly emerald and yet these particular gems don't scintillate a lot. One of the reasons why there is such a hefty price tag on such gems is because of the rarity, not because of the colour. So for example with aquamarine which is very sought after but has a nice light blue colour, you'll get the same colour within a lighter blue topaz but with the topaz you'll pay far less but you'll get far better output with the bling. In the following scenes you'll see all the stages of how the crown has been polished which means we're getting closer to the end of another video. I would personally like to thank all my subscribers and viewers for taking the time to watch my videos and this video is a little bit different. We try to have a lot of fun here by making this video and also helping out Blind Freddy with his bad eyesight. So stand by for the final reveal where you get to see the bionic eye lens in all its glory and also we'll have an update on Freddy after post-operation surgery and we'll see how he goes. So it's bye for now. Take care.